Hello, everyone. I'm Colin Tester of WrestleZone.com, joined by the Mecca, Brian Johnson, Ring of Honor's breakout star. Brian, how are you doing today? Well, I was informed that I had to have a conversation with you, so I certainly can't say it's the best Wednesday of my month. But nonetheless, it's Cinco de Mayo. I'm a shot or two of tequila deep because I have to be on this stupid interview, and I'm ready to rock. Very nice. Very nice. Well, you're, you're, yeah. you're, rock, you're rocking and rolling the Ring of Honor, I'll tell you that much. But Brian, when we last spoke, it was right around final battle time. You are coming. You're, uh, you had this match with Dan Housen. Didn't go the way you wanted to. We talked about that. But quite a lot has changed since then. You got a nice uh, a rematch with Dan Housen that you had been lobbying for for quite a while. And, you know, people can uh, criticize your methods, but you beat Dan Housen. You, you got the win over him. And I guess I got to ask, do, do you feel validated about that victory? Uh, the, you've talked about it both uh, on, on the, the, the TV show and when we spoke, like you, you've said that Dan Housen's kind of the antithesis of everything that, you know, you believe about wrestling and everything that you stand for as a wrestler. So how did it feel to get that big win over Dan Housen? And I guess just in kind of hindsight, what do you, what are your thoughts as the general kind of the feud with him as looking back on it now? So to make it clear for all these bozos at home, Dan Housen cheated to beat me at final battle. That's factual. I pinned him, the referee, some clown in zebra stripes, zebra stripes, excuse me, missed the call. I can't help that. He cheated. And then I went on to beat him twice, fair and square, right down the middle of the ring, one, two, three, and went on to victory. So how do I feel about it? I feel vindicated. Because if that bozo didn't cheat in the first place at final battle, the biggest pay per view, the biggest moment, maybe the biggest match of my career at that moment, I would have been victorious at the final battle. But he stole that from me. So you know what I stole from him? Two more W's. Actually, three more W's because I pinned his little ass at the 19th anniversary also. So I three did. and one against Dan Housen. Three and one against the internet. So all you bozos choking on your chin fat at home. Ha ha. Suck it. Well said, and uh, I this is now that you mentioned it. Yeah, you were on the 19th anniversary pay per view card as well, uh, and I think I, you know, I was thrilled to see you on the card at all. And then you, you all walked away with a win, and I was very happy to see that. So make that, you know, two pay per views in a row for Brian Johnson appearing on Ring of Honor. You know, again, not just the TV show, but now you're appearing on pay per view cards. That's that, that's got to feel like a step up, right? If I sat here and told you that um, I was not excited or I didn't have goosebumps or I didn't feel like a little kid in some sort of way, I'd be lying because I did. I don't hide from that. I freaking love pro wrestling. And the fact to say that I did it on pay-per-view twice, damn, that's freaking. And to say that I did it on Ring of Honor pay-per-view, which isn't some every month or every three weeks on some bullshit subscription service. No, it's damn near the best pay-per-view every three or four months because we put on the best damn pay-per-views with the best damn wrestling. To say that I was on their pay-per-view, feather in the cap, my man, feather in my cap. Absolutely, and there's something extra special about the the anniversary shows because it's like the uh, Ring of Honor's birthday party. It's like honoring that history and that legacy, and to be just to be on the card, let alone getting you know getting a win there. It's gotta feel. I'm good. shocked that you would know about birthday parties being celebrations. You look like the kid that most kids wouldn't have showed up to the birthday party at. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, birthday parties here at Ring of Honor were a big deal. I mean. If you can't get behind that Ring of Honor is the best wrestling on the planet, you don't know what, no wrestling. Look at every major company. They are lined with our legacy. We are the best wrestling. And they can all say that they, they, they are the best. No, they picked our talent. It's true. It's and true. we just line the legacy of pro wrestling. So to be on the 19th anniversary was badass. But specifically, I, they started the show with me. Why? Because they knew they needed to start off with a bang, right, my man? And You're that right. bang was me put my foot in Dan Housen's ass. That it was. I, and I think that was like well, we were just talking about the feud of Dan Housen. That was a fun way to open the show, even though it was a multi man match, just to have that kind of, yeah. you know, that story there was a very fun way to open the show. And like I said, I was still to see pick up the win. Um, and now, yeah, you're out, you're rolling in 2021. You beat uh, Dan Housen, you know, in that fatal in that four way match. You beat Dan Housen uh, again in that rematch. And then this, uh, this past week, you beat Ryan Mooney on uh, week by week. So you're you're on fire right now. Four and one. Four and one. I'm four and one in 2021. When when's it going to start paying off? I guess I guess if this is the payoff, I get interviewed by you. Jeez, maybe I don't want to get paid off. 
<laughs> but the, the thing is, is I'm four and one in 2021, and I still don't feel like there's enough people talking about me, Colin. I agree. Like, I, I think internet wrestling has their favorites for sure, and there's definitely bigger stories that come up. I'm not an idiot to that. But the fact that my name isn't on the tip of people's tongue right now either means they don't have a pulse or they're not watching Ring of Honor. And I, and I plan on changing that this weekend. I don't know if you guys heard. I got an open challenge coming. That was my next question. Open, you, wide open. Your ass, your ass wants some, you can have some. Show up. Yeah, but you, you, uh, this past week, I, I also showed it on, I think, week by week, but you issued an open challenge. You, you yes, asked Ring of Honor or demanded Ring of Honor management to give you this, op- this match that's you know, open, open-ended to whoever could face you. Now, uh, we've talked about it before, and you, you've, you've said it in promos, but you, I think your wording is you're an equal opportunity ass kicker. So even though, ass I guess, whooper. Uh, ass, ass whooper. whooper. There you go. Yeah, I don't just kick it. You whoop it. So I Damn, guess sitting right. I think you just made a T-shirt, my friend. But don't you dare try to say it's a mecca t-shirt because you're not allowed to represent me. That's very clear. Fair enough. But no, yep. sitting sitting here on Wednesday night, we, we got that match coming this weekend. You know, even though you are this equal opportunity ass whooper, uh, thank you. Is, I guess like sitting here now, is there anyone you want to see accept that challenge? Like, is there anyone you hope to see kind of step up there? You know, I guess you know the, uh, there are plenty. Well, of people. for starters, Roosh, and I'd hope he put the world championship on the line. Then I'd probably say John Gresham, and I'd hope he put the pure championship on the line. Then um, Tony Deppin and put the TV title on the line. So any one of them would be a great one of the three. That's in no order. I guess since I'm technically in third in line for the TV championship, I'd love to smack around Tony Deppin. Speaking, of net, speaking about internet fans and the choking on net fact, man, they all love that Tony Deppin. He's one of the biggest dorks I've ever ran into in my life. Seriously. Like, I understand he's tenacious and he wrestles hard and, like, does all this shit for his family. Yeah, great, man. And, like, in ways that's respectful, but, like, he's a total dork. He definitely got picked on his whole life, and he's just, like, trying to take it out. And I understand he got lucky. He beat Tracy Williams. He should be proud of himself. Tracy Williams is a fine competitor. But if I get in the ring with Tony Depp and I'm going to beat him three times this Sunday and I'm going to be the television champion. So I hope he answers the call. It's fair, obviously fair to hope that, you know, a champion will step up like that and maybe they will. But uh, you mentioned these championship, uh, this is the, the championship pursuit and you did face Dragon Lee. I think that was back in March or so. And I unfortunately came up on the short end of that. But uh, where do you see, I mean, you, you just mentioned that you were hoping to face any one of the champions, but you know, do you see yourself really uh, kind of narrowing that focus kind of beyond this, this open challenge? Like you've got the pure division, you've got the TV division and potentially the world title as well. Like where do you see yourself kind of going uh, at least in the short term future? Short term, I'm going to be a ring of honor television champ. I am third in the rankings, and the only reason I'm not two or one is because the two guys, the three guys above me, are hot potatoing it all around. Well, listen, if they want to pass off the carbohydrates, I got no problem putting them in my back pocket. I will take the hot potato and run all the way back to the supermarket, return it, and shove it up to some guys behind. Because I want to be the Ring of Honor television champion. Those guys want to worry about faction warfare and all that crap. I don't need no faction. You see, I don't have any friends. I'm not in some stupid group because I need to watch my back. I have two eyes. They're right here. And they're staring down the pike at the television championship. And if people don't realize that, they will soon enough. I don't care if it's Tracy, Tony, Dragon Lee again. Shit. If, if Dragon Lee was honest and was speaking English on here, he'd tell you I was the closest he's been to losing that damn title since he got it. He was scared. I took the beating to him from the moment it started. It's true. It's true. So, uh, you know, wh- whoever it may be, I'm sure that, you know, sooner and, lo- sooner and later, you will get another shot, uh, presumably at the TV title. Obviously, uh, you know, you're doing, you're doing great things right now. Like you said, four and one, and now you got this open challenge and whoever answers it, you know, we're wh- riding that momentum. We've got to think that. Uh, and let me be clear. I'm sorry to cut. No, I'm not really sorry. I, I, I want to make this clear. This open challenge isn't just ring of honor. I'm calling anybody out. You see other companies having guys show up from different shows all the time. You see other companies picking people that you wouldn't expect from an independent company coming up and getting an opportunity. I legitimately believe in my heart of hearts, I know 
that I am one of the best damn professional wrestlers on planet Earth, period, bar none. And when I speak, if you ain't brain dead, you listen, because I'm the best damn talker there is in professional wrestling. So I'm opening up an entire ring, the best ring for professional wrestling, to any jackass on the planet. Now, you, Whether you wrestle Wednesday night, Tuesday night, Monday night, Friday night, you sleep in your car to make Saturdays and Sunday night work, I don't give a damn. I'm better than you 100% and I'll prove it. And at the end, everyone will know one name, M-E-C-C-A, the Mecca, Brian Johnson. I mean, you, you took it there, so I got to ask, you know, if, uh, if the Open Challenge is really open like that, is there anybody uh, beyond Ring of Honor's walls that you kind of have your, if not, if not your sights set on, that, that you would, like, is it, like I asked earlier about Ring of Honor I, competitors, what do you want anyone to kind of, you know, again, beyond Ring of Honor to potentially accept that? Because I've been looking at it like, uh, you know, admittedly a little... Uh, Close mindedly, where I thought it would be kind of exclusive to Ring of Honor, but if you're saying it's really open like that, do you have somebody like again? I'm Listen, hoping, I'm hoping not, to face? I don't know who I'm allowed or not allowed to say, but I don't really give a damn. They're putting this on for me to, to say what I want. So, uh, how about Samoa Joe? I, I, like I hear he's free lately. I heard he doesn't have much going on. Things are opened up, huh? What if he was around? Or what if one of those bozos from from uh, Wednesday night showed up and came back and got the tail stuck between their legs. It's true. I, I'm I not think gonna that's... say specific names or hear that. They know who I am. I know they're hearing me. Slowly but surely, they're all listening. Anybody I, I... wants it, come get some. Yeah. And I, I guess you, you just mentioned Samoa Joe. Uh, when you uh, were giving the promo about the Open Challenge, you were, you were basically saying that, you know, Ring of Honor's got all these great names. It's got that, and we were talking about earlier, it's got that great lineage uh, of these, you know, real stars that have, have gone on to do great things elsewhere as well. Uh, Still doing great things. Absolutely, of course. You, know, you just said Samoa Some Joe. Some of the best things in wrestling, period, right? And, Absolutely. So, you know, and you meant, but you mentioned even that, like, despite that, or maybe because of that, you, you look at that lineage, you look at the history and you said you want to be better than all of them. You want to be the best, not one of the I best. Not, be. So where, how do you think, I, I guess just in a, in a very broad sense, maybe, but how do you kind of plan to go down as one of the all time greats? Like what, what, what do you see? How do you see yourself necessarily standing out in that, in that sense? I think the biggest key to any great in any sport is consistency. You think of all the all-time greats of all time. They were consistent, whether they were consistent at winning or putting in the work or being a teammate or being a leader or making a shot or hitting, hitting a pitch or sinking a, a putt, whatever it is, the all-time greats were consistent. And I'm going to be consistent as a day is long. Do I bang the ROH drum a little louder? Yeah, you're darn right. Because that's my company, my flag. I want my flag to swing and fly higher than everybody else's. Because then everybody makes more money that way, right? And that's the name of the game. Being the best means you get paid the most. And I know that I am damn good. And how do I keep on doing it? It's being consistent. I've worked my ass off. Not that anybody else has. And I'm not asking for credit. I'm not asking for Barry Horowitz. No, I'm not asking for that. I'm not one of these jabronis that have to go online and tell you how hard I work. No. What I'm saying is just give me the freaking opportunity, and I will. I will run the ball down their throat. I will hit a home run. I will score the game winning three. I will sink the winning putt. It doesn't matter. The Mecca just hasn't been given the chance, and now that I have, let's face facts, I'm finally been given a chance because a damn pandemic happened. A global pandemic silenced the damn near wrestling world. It almost went away, and that's when I got a chance. I've been doing this crap for years. Just no one listened or paid attention. And now that they are, what I'm going to do is be the most consistent pain in their ass because I'm going to shove it down every single person's throat that doubted me or didn't mention me to begin with. My voice is going to be louder, longer, and the most consistently heard thing in professional wrestling for an entire Metcade as I run through people. And I said in that promo, I meant it. LSG, to Dan Housen, to Mile High Magnum. Hey, Jay Lethal, I hope you're listening too. Franchise, you think I ain't looking up to you 
wanting to chop your legs out. You're damn right. Jay Briscoe, Mark Briscoe, them boys. Don't worry about missing a few teeth when you get in the ring with me. I'll whoop your ass. Yeah. I just, I don't know, man. I'm fired up about it. I'm finally getting my opportunity. People are listening. There is something really. And that's about. what I'm going to do. I'm going to be consistent. Absolutely, and and we've seen that you know every time you're on you're on the show, whether even if it's just a promo on week by week, you bring it every single time. And I do think there's something, something nice, or I guess it's like you know a silver lining where it, we have been in this pandemic. The wrestling world got turned really upside down. But for me, at least, you know more than really anybody I can think of off the top of my head of people that like really were under the radar, you know, kind of unheralded before the pandemic. You've really been this like bright star that's really like shined uh, in these in, in this increased opportunity so even now you know that in some senses the world's returning to some semblance of normalcy uh you know there's no going back right like you are you have gotten this opportunity you've you've made this name for yourself especially if you compare it to, to where you were if we say let's say two years ago before the pandemic pandemic yeah. whatsoever you know there's there's no going back so it is very exciting to see um you know, where you could even go from here, you know, what, uh, from well, this weekend and the open challenge and then even beyond that, uh, there, there's something kind of, uh, I don't know. There's, there's something pretty powerful. And that there. open challenge doesn't, you know, I, I hope people realize I'm dead serious when I say anybody anywhere can get it. I mean that because I, I, for so long I sat in my little, my little hole in my little place where I, I worked my few independents and and I was awesome, clearly. Look at what I'm doing. Duh. But I never branched out because I didn't think I needed to. But now that the independents are blooming and blossoming and all these people claiming they're the best, I will eat you the freak alive inside of that wrestling room. Anybody that wants it, come get it. I'm wide open. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to seeing who does step up. But now, now that you have mentioned it, uh... Yeah, you know, especially we can you know, this open challenge as an example. But you know, you mentioned other shows, you know, people popping up on the, on different things, uh, and we're seeing at least some hint that you know Ring of Honor might be going in that direction as well. Yeah, Rocky Romero uh, appeared on the show and teased that he wants to, uh, I guess, to use the cliche, open the forbidden door for Ring of Honor as well. What would you think of that potentially happening at some point? Of this uh, collaboration or or more people uh, kind of beyond Ring of Honor's borders coming in? I think any sort of eyes or any sort of talent, I should say, that puts more eyes on Ring of Honor or on professional wrestling, I'm all for it. I don't care what company you're from. If people are scared of it because uh, they're scared of the competition, then you don't need to be here. You'll get eaten alive by sharks. That's fine. I don't mind. See it. If it's competition that I want, it's competition that I'll get any company in the world. Uh, if it's New Japan, they obviously got a roster of just – Super talented dudes, uh, some of which I've met maybe a few times in passing uh, when we were previously working together, uh, some of which I've never met. And uh, most of them seem to be, no offense, you know, the New Japan guys, they're, they're kind of assholes. Like, no one really likes them. Most of them seem that way. So, like, I'd love to slap the crap out of any of them, top to bottom. David Finley kind of annoys me, but anybody really, yeah. Yeah. And uh, speaking of just some, uh, you know, we're talking about that interaction, you know, someone that you would want to be facing. I do have to ask, you know, I think it was during the Danhausen match. I, uh, Mark Briscoe was on commentary and he had a little uh, bit of a stare down. And I couldn't help but wonder, like, is that something like. You couldn't wonder high where high? Mark was staring because his eyes were crossed and he, he scored me. Is that what you were about to say? I'm sorry. Pretty. And, and, not, and not so many words, but essentially. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, if Mark wants to look at the Mecca. He doesn't have to look too long. I know who Mark Briscoe is. See, people think that I'm just this, like, disrespect for punk that doesn't understand what I'm doing. No. Mark Briscoe is an 11-time, 12-time world tag team champion. He's from the Briscoe family, the legitimate badass, baddest of asses Briscoe family. And I realized that he's as bad as they come. You can't start a Hall of Fame. You can't mention Ring of Honor without mentioning Briscoe. So I know what I'm barking at when I look at Mark Briscoe, but I also know that he's a dog that's way past his age. He's way past his prime. I could say the cliche, I got to take him out behind the, the cellar and put him to sleep. No, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is slap the mud around and let him know that there's a new owner at this place. Then he can go fetch me a beer and shit outside while I put my feet up. Mark Briscoe, you and your brother, you are bad, bad men that have a lineage. 
here that I, I plan on surpassing, but I haven't yet. But right now, you got to realize that the time has come for a mecha locomotive to shoot past you. So your little farm and your chickens, sorry, I'm running right by us. Yeah, and like I said, we, we've been seeing that lately because you have been on, on a roll. And if Mark doesn't like it, Mark knows where to find me. That he does. You know, we, you work at the same place. So, you know, obviously, if he does want to face it, you're not hard to find. So um, I guess in closing here, you know, you, uh, and I meant to ask this earlier, but uh, you, obviously you and I did speak around final ballot time. A lot has changed since then. You're absolutely on a roll. But what would you say has maybe changed uh, for what? How's Brian, how's Brian Johnson different now compared to even just last December? Like now that you are getting more opportunities now that you are, on this winning streak. I remember when we, when we last spoke, you, you said you wanted to start string, stringing together victories and it wasn't working out, but now they are. So what, what's changed? It's consistency and self-awareness. Um, I realized that I was doing the right things, but I wasn't getting the results that I wanted. And you just got to change little things. You got to watch your game and stay on top of it. So many guys are pro wrestlers because they want to say they're pro wrestling, they want to put in the actual work, and they want to go online and talk about how hard they work, but really they're just lazy pieces of trash, just like they've always been. Uh, what's happening with me is just consistency pays off, consistency and hard work, and keeping my nose to the goddamn road. And, and, and I'd be lying if, if I said I wasn't lucky enough to have it. In a way, I don't want to say lucky, but this pandemic gave people a chance to start listening. Because I didn't think if, if you pick up a win against Ryan Mooney, I've done that before in Future of Honor. It didn't catapult me. I beat Ryan Mooney, and now i got an open challenge, and who knows who else would answer. And you're interviewing me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I really think that having these sit-downs and getting my voice out there and letting people hear what i got to say uh, has been such a, a big key in, in having this. Even when we talked at Final Battle, um, we had just come back in September – which I wasn't in the pure rules tournament. Way to go, jackass management of Ring of Honor. I wasn't in it. Can you imagine that? They picked 16 guys to try to entertain you people. They didn't pick. You didn't pick me, you idiots. Anyway, and then after that, I had a few sit-downs here and there, and yeah, it was cooking right away. Dak, Dalton, right? But losses, losses. Dan House and Triple Ds. Damn, I've never seen Triple Ds I didn't like to then. But then you get refocused and you stay consistent, like I said. Consistency and hard work. And it pays off. It has. And we're, uh, we're, we're, we really are seeing that. And, you know, we will see that whoever does answer the Open Challenge this weekend, you've got to think that, you know, the momentum is on your side. So I'll, I'll be rooting for you. And I'm looking forward to watching that this weekend. Don't root for me. Don't root for me. I don't need you hopping on a bandwagon. Hey, to be fair, I, I was rooting for you like from the first time I saw you on TV because I, I, I saw something new when you, when you, the first time you cut a promo, I was like, this guy's got something. And I've, I've been thankfully proven right. I'm, I will say that. And I, I've been, I really do. John, I believe you are correct based off of some, some Twitter proof. So I'll give you a little bit of a break there. I appreciate it. Don't go ruining my reputation. Don't show anybody what you look like. If you're going to be a fan of me, you stay on the radio, kid. Fair enough. Fair enough. But uh, we will see whoever does uh, answer the open challenge. It will be this weekend on Ring of Honor Wrestling. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'll be covering it with the Recap of Honor podcast on Monday. But definitely looking forward to it. And Brian, um, you know, ho hopefully that, that win will launch you to even better things throughout the rest of 2021. Hey, uh, let's hope the next time I'm talking to you, there's uh, 10 pounds of gold sitting right here. How's that? I certainly hope so. Oh. Damn right. Well, Brian, it's been a pleasure. I thank you for your time today. All and yours. Good, good luck uh, for your match and for, again, the, I guess the rest of 2021. All right, my man.